Hey, what's happening? Hope everyone is doing good, doing well. It's officially spring. You guys excited about the spring? I know I am. Springtime for me means more training time. It means to, it's time to start wrapping up that training, ramping it up, putting more effort into your training and start developing new skills, right? If you guys are watching live, jumping on here, throw me a little comment. Let me know where you're watching from. Kind of a spontaneous live. You guys know that's how I usually do them. I don't, uh, I don't typically, you know, jump on here and, you know, have all these, have all these uh, scheduled uh, lives and stuff. I just kind of jump on here and uh, just do, just do some lives, you know. It's kind of how I just do things. Hello, Paul. Just finished training. Nice. Kevin Williams, welcome to level two member. Just became a member. Awesome. With a recovering foot. Good. Kali will make it stronger. As long as you don't injure it. <laughs> Trained within the means. You know what you can do and what you shouldn't do. So, but if you're doing it, doing it right, Kali will help that foot recover faster and stronger. Better than it ever was before it was injured. From Missouri, UK. Manchester, nice. You guys want some uh, striking mechanic tips today? I figure I'll do a couple strike mechanics tips today. Um, I'm out here training and everything, you know, enjoying the first couple days of official spring. I've been out here doing a lot of garden work and last couple of days, so I'm like, I'm just gonna take a day and do some training. And uh, I was thinking to myself that, you know, we got ITC coming up. That's our five day immersion training camp at the end of June. And uh, the people that are attending, like, they can definitely use the uh, striking mechanic tips, right? Like we can never have enough tips in, in improving our strikes and our mechanics and all that stuff. Hey, what's happening? What's happening? So I figure I'll go ahead and jump on here and do a little bit of that. It's raining out there. I was training out here in the rain just a couple days ago. Let it rain out there a lot, right? In the Pacific Northwest West, it rains a lot, so it's like if you don't if you don't get your training in, you're making your own game. Nice. What kind of game? I'm not I'm not a gamer. Like I don't I don't play video games and stuff. I'm just not interested in that. I just never like when I was little, I used to play like Zelda on just like regular Nintendo, whatever that thing is, you know, I just play Zelda. I got to that point where like I could beat it in like 30 minutes and then I was like, this, this is done, you know? And then I just, I wouldn't, uh, I'm like, ah, don't, I don't need that. So then it's like, I just started going outside a lot more. <laughs> but that's cool, man. I don't have anything against people that, that like, that like games. I think that's cool. I just, I just don't. I just want to spend my time outside <laughs> as much as I can, you know. Hey, Paul, thank you for manifesting yourself and your love for the arts. Boom, carry on. Marine Corps and NYC, nice. Do you ever get over to UK to give lessons? If so, let me know. I am up for it. Uh, you know, once this COVID stuff and, you know, all this whatever is done with, I'd like to get back to Europe and... Do some training with y'all out there. <laughs> it does rain. More scream of sticks in movies. Yeah, man, I totally agree. You guys, you guys should be emailing all these movie people and tell them you guys, you guys need Paul Ingram from Collie Center to be teaching you guys how to use some collie sticks in your movies. They won't listen to me, but they might. If you put enough pressure on them, maybe we can get more collie, uh, collie stuff in, in the movies. 
They probably won't like my approach. It would be too realistic for the fights. It, it'd be entertaining to us, but probably not to, you know, general people. I don't know. I think it'd be kind of cool, you know? You're seeing in movies, like, that guy's hand is gone. 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 And then just go back and follow them, you know, finish them all up, right? Sort of like a combat game. I need your advice on how to make Kali moves for it. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, may maybe today's training tips, maybe uh, the, the mechanic tips will help, will help you out with that. Me too. Yep, it does rain a lot. Yeah, it rains a lot out there. How do you like Belinta Walk? You know, I, I tasted Belinta Walk. I'm not like a Belinta Walk practitioner, so I can't say if it's, you know, good, bad, or if I, I'm kind of impartial to it because I just don't really, it just never really caught my attention. Um, you know, I, I tried it. Um, you know, we, we've had some people that were teaching it and stuff, and it just didn't really catch my attention. I, I want to move around a lot, you know, like, I want, I want to move, you know, I want to train in a manner that allows me to navigate that difficult terrain out there <clears throat> so that I can like, I can maneuver and flow against multiple people, you know, like that's, that's my kind of train of thought. I, I like, I'm more attracted to the styles that are more kind of familiar with like similar to like fencing. Right, like I like I like the fencing. I like to move around. I'm a I'm a little you know ADD like that. I like to move around. I like to run around out there and the, like like sometimes when Tom and all the guys are here and you know the staff and we're doing our training and stuff. We we go train out there and we just take turns doing mobile opponents and stuff like that and you know because like I don't know there's there's you know when, when people start talking about reality fighting. There's so many different types of scenarios. Like, I don't know if one martial art's ever going to really be able to cover them all. At some point, it just gets to a point of, is your training giving you the ingenuity to problem solve the specific scenario, right? Um, so the training that I've always kind of leaned to, it's just, it's done that for me. It, it gives me the ability to problem solve. That, in, uh, that ingenu, eh. You know what I'm saying. I want to train, man. I want to talk. But I'm just waiting for some people to, you know, jump on in and all that. And then we're going to get moving here. Maybe around the 10-minute mark, we'll get, I'll get to it. Be good to have a chapter leader over here in the UK. I agree, man. I agree. Howdy. We want holly sticks. Like from a holly tree? From UK... What was my response? Oh, I was just saying, check out the stream, man. When I get to the mechanics, the, my tips here that I'm going to give you today, maybe, you know, you'll get something that'll help you out. Or just go through all my videos. I've got almost 700 videos for free here on YouTube that I'm sure you'll get some good tips if you go through my extensive library of videos. I've seen online that police and military all over the world want to learn Kali. Everybody wants to start learning Kali. It's the best. I mean, come on. Like, like it, it puts the power in your hands right away. Check this out. I mean, like, how, how many martial arts do you, do you know of are you, like, beginning your training with, with weapons? Right? I mean, besides, like, actual fencing and when you start looking at like chinese martial arts japanese martial arts korean martial arts even western martial arts like western boxing where's the weapons kali you start off right here with the weapons man right so police officers they got a whole belt of tools to do their job right military they're, they're not going into they're not flying overseas and going into war empty hands to box and grapple they're going they're i mean they may need that but they're going over there with weapons right with the weapon mentality so it makes sense that they're going to want kali i mean that's why i wanted kali how you you know how are you going to defend your 
your business or your family when you got 15 people looting the place that you're in right now because they're mad about some kind of current event, right? If you don't have weapons. You can only arm bar one person at a time. But, you know, this, ooh, ooh, I might hit two or three people with that, you know, within that second. And, you know, getting hit with that, it, uh, bah, it, uh, it, it does something. <laughs> it rings something. But I'm not against that. Like, I, I, I trained boxing for many years. Uh, I, I've trained some grappling for quite a few years. Like, you know, I did the whole JKD thing, and I love all that stuff. So I'm not against that stuff. I think you need that. But I think you also, you know, everyone also needs Kali. <clears throat> oh, we got to get going here because it's past 10 minutes. Nice. Tune in later. That's good, man. Train with them. Give your brother some Kali. Ever heard of HEMA? You mean historical European martial arts? Never heard of it. <laughs> yeah, but the thing, the thing with HEMA is that, you know, they're, they're trying to figure that out, refigure it out from manuscripts that were written hundreds of years ago. So Kali, Kali, this this is a martial art, right? When we when we look at martial arts that I'm talking about, Kali, uh, different styles of kung fu, uh, you know, Japanese arts, Korean arts, these are arts that have been consistently passed down for generations, for hundreds of years, while most of the European arts kind of weren't, right? So a lot of people that are teaching the European martial arts now, you know, that wasn't directly passed down like Kali was. Like if you're training in Pekiti Tertia, that system was directly passed down, right? Conrado Torto to uh, Leo Tegahi to my teacher who was Tim Wade, you know, and, and like, but for the historical European martial arts, for HEMA, you don't have that, right? It's, it's being reinvented right now. So I, I don't really classify that as the same category of martial arts. You know, Wushu, what they're doing with the weaponry, it's beautiful. It's, it's extremely athletic and everything. That has been passed down through the generations of teacher to student, teacher to student. Not manuscript to student necessarily. Manuscript to, you know, practitioner trying to figure it out. Hopefully that makes sense. I don't have anything against HEMA. I think HEMA is awesome with what people are doing. But that's the difference in conversations. Are aluminum sticks worth it? My personal opinion, my business opinion, yes. My personal opinion, no. <laughs> hey Paul, do you ever hold the stick or bolo with a saber grip? With a thumb on the back hilt, like you do with the knife. I've mostly seen you use more of a hammer grip with a stick. No, I do not. The balance point on a stick or a bolo is different than the balance on a knife. So I do not. It is not the same weapon. Therefore, it does not necessarily use the same grip. Now, there are alternated grips that I use with the bolo, but it's not a saber grip. Uh, graphite? I mean, train with whatever you want to train with, dude. I would not train with that. I just like the traditional rattan. It's great for, you know, I can solo train with it. I can train with a partner. I can spar with it. It's safe. I don't have to worry about it breaking. It's not too light. It's not too heavy for developing new skills. You know, it's, it's just, it's just the traditional way. So if, if you like graphite sticks or aluminum sticks or whatever you like, train, train with what you like. College school near me, but it's two hours away from my location. Sometimes you got to drive two hours to go train, man. Watching from the Philippines. All right. What are your thoughts on comparison with FMA and C-Lot? Two different things.
<laughs> yeah, Will. That number one is powerful, man. It's powerful. Just a footwork alone. That's true. That's really, that's, that's what police, that's what law enforcement and military should really be after when it comes to the collie is the footwork. Savat. Well, Savat is the kicking art. Right? <clears throat> that's, that's not the weapon art of the French. Yeah, see, Morgan's got it. I sleep with my sticks. Do you have any tips for moves for when the opponent grabs your staff? Well, number one, don't let them. <laughs> I know that's easier said than done sometimes, but that's number one. Uh, I would say improve your footwork and uh, improve your striking mechanics so that way you can renegotiate your tactics so it doesn't get grabbed in the first place. Like, Tom will never grab any of my weapons. It'll never happen. Now, if it does happen, okay, then you go into your other tools. Instead of trying to grapple, trying to get the stick back, it's time to bust up their face with your natural tools. Or their knees. Hey, what's happening? <laughs> Matt Murdock's Kali fight scenes. I don't know who Matt Murdock is. Is that a movie? Is that a teacher out there? I don't even I don't even know what that is. If you guys start talking movies about me, I'll tell you that I have no idea. I, I don't play video games. I really don't watch movies. Like, really... Uh, I hang out outside, I hike, I train. That's what I do. We got some, got some game people on here. I don't know that world, man. I don't, I don't know that world. I'm, I'm a complete idiot when it comes to the world of movies and games. Do some breakdown fight scenes. Eh. I'd rather just teach man and train. I don't want to waste my time with movie scenes. That's all fake. Why would I want to? Why, why would I want to break down fake stuff? Yeah, some of the stuff can be used in real life. My 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 breakdown for a pretty much all movie fight scenes is gonna be like, looks cool, man, and that's great. I love that people love that stuff. <laughs> I'm going to go do my thing now. My, my old uh, training partner student, Joey B slash three, he does that stuff. Go check out his channel if you want movie breakdowns and stuff like that. Fight scene breakdowns. What is etiquette as you were taught? I'll get to that. I play video games and watch anime. That's cool, man. A lot of fights and training look a lot like Kali style fighting in movies. It's getting popular. Yeah. All right. Let's take a look at uh, a couple of striking mechanics. I just want to give you guys a couple of little tips. Uh, I want to try to keep these tips more universal. So if you're training in different styles, if you're training in different systems and things like that, um, I want you guys to just have like general tips that you could apply to those other styles and systems. I don't want to like override something that you might have been spending a lot of time working on and developing those particular types of techniques and striking principles and stuff like that. So I'm gonna, I'll give you guys just a couple general tips that I think are gonna really help you out. And then Morgan, if you're still hanging around, I'll, uh, I'll get to that little, uh, your question there about the etichetti. Um, because there, there was a whole bunch, I won't go like crazy deep on it, but I'll kind of just touch like the general of it because it method nine gets pretty deep all right um okay so strike mechanics number one is everybody wants to have that perfect strike that's going to do maximum delivery of damage to their opponent correct right like we all every martial art wants that you know one strike knockout doesn't mean that you're gonna get that. You know, you might have to hit somebody multiple times. I usually find more pleasure out of that than hitting someone just once. But 
<laughs> but, you know, in martial arts, I would say it's pretty safe to say that every martial arts does strive for that, right? That one shot knockout. So we want to make sure we're, del we're delivering good mechanics, we're delivering good power, good speed, and we're continuously developing those types of uh, you know, qualities in our strikes. So one of the main things when it comes to tips, when you are training, this is more of a mental focus tip, when you are training, focus on the coordination of the skill that is being learned. Okay, coordination, all skill starts in the beginning with coordination. And it seems very simple, but being a, a teacher of this stuff, I've been a practitioner of Filipino martial arts for around 22 years now. And I've been teaching for the past like 13, 14 years now, since 2007. So you do the math on that. Since 2007, I've been teaching. Um, so I have seen people progress who have been focusing on really understanding the coordination of movements. And then I've seen people who have progressed who were not really focusing on that. And even though the people who do not focus on it, they may become effective and chances are they're going to be effective. Where it really starts to break down for them is in the advanced games. Okay. And uh, the person that was focusing on the coordination in the beginning, they have this like massive growth spurt when they hit around that intermediate level. And then when they get to the advance, it's like the fun really starts to kick off because they put that time into it. And a lot of people just kind of want to hurry up and rush through the basics, the fundamentals. But I dial in every single time that I train, I redial in the basic coordination of the movements, at least of the basics, right? So like here at College Center, we have our basic angles. We have our angle one, we have our angle two, we have our angle three, and we have our angle four. The idea for me is that I can always be improving these. Even though I've been doing these strikes for a very long time, I can always be improving these strikes. There's always ways for my body to simplify the movements as it's getting more and more and more coordinated each year with persistent training. Okay? So we have one, two, three, and four. So here at Kali Center, we have 12 different striking mechanic principles that we follow for all of our strikes. It covers all of our strikes. The weapons, the empty hands, the slashes, the thrusts, okay? And uh, so whatever style that you are training in, make sure that you are touching base with your teachers or wherever you're getting your info from and you're learning from, that you are making sure you know all the requirements for your striking, for your striking mechanics. And every time that you train, whether it's in class or it's on your own, take some time and redial in all those steps, all those principles as best as you can. So I'm not expecting a, a brand new beginner student to have like the perfect striking mechanics. It's just not gonna happen. Right? On average, it takes about three to six months to have developed what we call workable mechanics, right? Where we can really start playing the flow games with you and really start ramping your training up and getting you moving up to the next level and everything. That's just the time that it takes. It doesn't matter your personality type, you know, it doesn't matter your experience coming in from another art and all that stuff. It typically takes around, on average, three to six months to get that coordination workable. Now, you can still train within that time. What I'm saying is when we start getting into the, you know, into these games that all the different flow games and things like that, um, that's where you're going to really start seeing like it's coming together, right? The flow is coming together, all these different things that happen in the flow and possibilities, it all comes together. Because as you are increasing your coordination, you're also increasing your ability to see what is going on. So I have this saying, and if you ever hear anybody using this saying, uh, they got it from me. They were watching our videos or came out and trained with us or anything like that. But the saying is, the precise can always see the precise and the imprecise. And the imprecise will see little to nothing. So if you're training for precision, you're training your eye to catch precision and imprecision. If you are not training for precision, then you're going to see little to nothing. Okay, so when you are trying to train at the advanced level, 
you're a beginner trying to train at the advanced level and you're gonna get frustrated and it's just not gonna be fun. All right, and frustration is a source of uh, trying to kind of fast track through information that you should have slowed down and took more time with, okay? So that's number one. Anything, any style that you're training, make sure to focus on the coordination, the proper performance, physical performance of that strike, okay? So number two is let's look at the body. Whether you, you know, whatever your striking mechanics are, if you're starting off right here at the chamber position, if, if you're more of a shoulder load, if you're more of, you know, from here and you're gonna cock back and go, if you're kind of more from the, what we call the half moon, the crescent moon load right here, kind of a little bit more like some of the illustrissimo techniques or anything like that, whatever it is, make sure that you're paying attention to your posture. Posture and skeletal alignment is extremely, extremely important. Okay, so make sure you're not slunched over, broken spine, all that stuff, arm kind of dangling. Get your spine up, get those shoulders back, get your head up, okay? Sometimes you gotta tuck the chin to protect, look over the brow, that's fine, okay? But we wanna make sure we have good structure, good posture on our body, okay? All the strikes. This is the way that the human body is meant to be. It is not meant to be all you know broken and feebled out like this, okay? It's meant to be up. This is where we're gonna get the most athleticism through our torso, through the rotation of our hips and our shoulders, okay? So whenever you're training, make sure that you focus on that posture. Make sure you got good posture. Now, if you got kind of bad posture throughout the rest of your life, like there's days I'm fidgety, there's days I don't have the best posture, but when I'm training, that everything, everything straightens out from there once I'm training, okay? That's gonna help as you're learning about footwork and proper knee alignment and toe alignment and you know how to pull from certain pulling points to help you navigate your terrain better. Having good posture is gonna help you in that department when it comes to your footwork, okay? So trust me on that and try it out. Make sure you have good posture. I remember even back in my boxing days, even though we had to kind of tuck in, my, my boxing coach would still talk about have good posture though. Even though you're tucked in, you're trying to protect that chin, and all that, make sure that you've got good posture. Make sure you're not kind of like, you know, broken over too much because when you're broken over too much, it puts compression and you're actually kind of immobilizing your hips quite a bit. So when you have that good posture, it keeps your hips opened up. So your footwork is way better, right? You, you can maneuver, you got more freedom to use your legs. So make sure you got good posture, okay? Let's see, what, what do we got here? And then I'll, I'll give you guys a couple more. <clears throat> Let's see what we got. Kamagong, yeah, it's an endangered species of wood from the Philippines. I have not seen Raya and the Last Dragon yet. That is one that I do want to see, but I have not taken the time to see it. It's hard for me to make time, to, to want to take time to watch a movie, even though that's the one I, I do actually want to see. So I will get to it. I haven't seen it yet, though. I've been busy, man. I've been gardening and training, and I'm getting ready uh, for next weekend to uh, head out to St. Augustine, Florida to teach and train for a few days. So, oh, shoot, what was that? If it's fake, tear it apart and show why it's fake. Why? Why, why, why? why put the effort and the energy into tearing something apart just to prove why it... That's Other people can use their energy that way. I don't want to use my energy that way, man. I don't, I, don't, I don't like just like going off and saying why people are wrong. I want to help people. You know, in movies... Guys, movies are developed not, not, not for practical fighting. It's, it's developed for entertainment. So it's not wrong for the entertainment world, okay? The TV show Vikings, great entertainment. It doesn't mean that it's accurate according to the history of Vikings. It's not. But it's good entertainment, so just leave it at that. That's how I feel about it. Would I get more views if I use, like, The Hunted and Jason Bourne in my, movie, in, in my video titles? Probably, but I don't want to do that.
I'll let other people spend their time that way. It's good to watch and criticize. It's better to just get out there and train. Criticize yourself while you're training so you could improve your own skill. Because nobody cares. At the end of the day, if I criticize a movie, how, mu how, how much are you going to talk about that? How much is that going to improve what you're doing? Improve your collie? I mean, when you can just come on here and get drills and just, just train. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll show some Heaven Six. Jesse and Kemp. I know a lot of Jessies. I don't know if I know his last name. Is that, is that like Tuhan Jesse or something like that? I don't know. That's what I'm going to guess. I've met a lot of Jessies. Can you show us Redonda, please? A lot of versions. Redonda. Redonda. Redondo. Redondo. Redondo just means repeat. Right? It just means over and over and over again in Spanish. It just means it just it's just repeat. So anything that you're repeating is 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 a redonda. <laughs> That's funny. Might be true though. Sensei Emmett. Might, it might be true. I don't know. That's 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 pretty good. Do you do much full contact versus contact training, not just flow drills? Come train, dude. Come train. Find out how we train. I've been, you know, I've been holding ITC. This is the fifth year, I think. Fifth year of ITC. Come train, man. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know why people don't want to come train with me. I don't get it. They all want me to go to them. I had to go to my teachers. <laughs> I had to travel across the country to go train with my teachers. People complain about a two hour drive. I had to drive 15 hours to go train with my teacher. I think the Ninja Turtles were fantastic. I love them. I don't really care for them, what they're doing with them nowadays, but they were great. I used to watch them as a kid. What made me get into Kali? Uh, here, I'll show you. That image right there. Speaking of, Leon, uh, of Ninja Turtles, Leonardo got me into Kali. They didn't even train Kali, right? They were students of ninjutsu. See, I wasn't attracted to Leonardo. I was attracted to the swords. And then I wanted to learn how to use them. So. I chamber most of my strikes uh, when I am showing the more beginner basic stuff yes because that's the basic of the strikes right so like when I'm out here just training solo there, there, there's no reason to really do all these other manipulations and stuff right like there's no timing there's no time exchange going on with another person so I'm not actually applying tactics I'm, I'm just I'm just moving through techniques. So when I'm, when I'm, this is why a lot of my YouTube videos on here, they're very basic because quite frankly, I don't know you. Uh, I haven't trained with you. Um, so I don't, I don't know what your skill level is. So I'm going to show basics. You know, everything that goes beyond basics that we teach is in our other programs. All right. So yes. 
I definitely will go to chamber quite a bit. Now, when I'm flowing with like Tom, because Tom is advancing all the time, then I go to chamber when I need to, and I bypass or manipulate when I need to. So at a, at a performance level, the technical execution is based on what does the tactic need. Does that make sense? It, it, it's not it's not you know based on like a particular drill anymore. It's based on what needs to be negotiated. All right? Does that make sense? The information is very clear. Thanks, man. I like that. Nice. I'll have to check it out. I heard. I heard that it was, it was really good. Will a graphite helmet hold up to against collie strikes? I don't know. I never tried one. We can try one sometime. I, I mean, how many times are you going to get whacked in the head? Right? How many times are you planning on that? So we, we put the gear on for a couple of reasons. Number one, we put the gear on when we are, uh, when I'm working with a student, usually that's like intermediate, like full contact, like that type of sparring when you got headgear on and gloves on, we do most of that at our intermediate level. Once you are advanced, you are responsible of actually protecting yourself. So Tom is someone that we don't, Sometimes we throw the gear on. So with Tom, I'll throw the, you know, we'll throw the gear on when we're working something new. And I want him to be able to start recognizing what is the proper timing and, and, and when to use a particular tactic or counter or something like that. So then we'll put the gear on. Um, and then we kind of work his way up because I need to know that he can protect himself before we take the gear off and we really train. So at Kali Center, our training is different. And I've been called irresponsible teacher. I've been called all kinds of things. But we have a very high emphasis on true skill. Being able to, to actually protect yourself. So if you get your hand broken in training, that's your fault, right? That's, that's not, if, if I whack your hand and your hand is broken at, at an advanced level, we don't do that with beginners. But at an advanced level, that's not my fault. You didn't protect yourself. You got your hand broken, right? So that's kind of like how we train. So when, because when you start looking at like reality stuff, self-defense, self-preservation stuff, like I don't really like that term. I don't think a lot of people really train self-defense, um, to be honest. I think people are pretending to train self-defense. I don't think they're really training self-defense though. And what I mean by that is you're, you're, you're not putting yourself at the risk of what a self-defense situation would be. And I'm not saying, you know, go and put live knives in your hands and all that stuff. But with rattan sticks, you know, if someone's going to be swinging a, a metal pipe at you, but you know, you're not training with rattan without protective gear on at full speed, full power at risk of getting your hand broken. What are you really training as far as the confidence of being able to protect yourself and read situation and negotiate tactics appropriately? You're kind of guessing. And, and the gear, like the way I spar when I have the gear on, it's very different than when I spar without the gear. And, you know, like Tom, if Tom hits my hand, he's, he's, he's literally going to break my hand. So, you know, there's times that we train like that. And I don't want to be relying on that. So we use the gear when it's needed, especially in the development department of either a skill or a student, developing them, having them bridge that gap from intermediate to advance. Because then by that point, our advanced guys, they don't, they don't care if they have a helmet on or not. They don't care if they have gloves on anymore or not. You know, that's the most important thing is that they're actually training and that when we're training, there's, there's a real attack, right? There, there's, there's a real threat. And you want to know 100% that you protected yourself and you're able to deliver a counter or deliver your attack and without the reliance of gear of if you made a mistake. You know, the, the, the main thing is that we, we, we like the mindset of working towards eliminating our mistakes. 
not mitigating them. We want to eliminate them. I don't want to make that mistake again. The mistake that got me hit, that got my head cracked with a fencing mask on in the sparring, I can't make that mistake in reality when I'm trying to protect my kid, okay? I can't, I can't make that mistake. So we want to eliminate those things as best as we can. That's the mindset that we bring to our training. You don't have to agree with it. I know most people don't agree with it, you know, but that's what we do because like I have, I have a family and I think about that type of stuff. Like, well, if I go down because my training has taught me that it's okay to get hit when I have a fencing mask on or a glove on, you know, like pe people talk about how your, your performance degrades down to how your training is. Well, then why are you training with safety gear on if you don't, if you're not, you know, why is that the holy grail when you're not out there in the world with a fencing mask and some hockey gloves? Right, that's my own. That's my own thing. So if you don't like that, just go train with somebody else. You won't hurt my feelings. So, to briefly answer your question, yes, and no. <laughs> okay, we don't we don't rely on that stuff. I want my seven-year-old to do collie. Was wondering with uh, Apex, you could do a kid's collie. I won't do that. Um, I, I I won't do that just just because of you know the way that I teach and and all that stuff. I used to teach kids way 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 back and stuff, and I'll teach my kids if they want to learn. But uh, I'm not gonna like make a a particular program that is for kids. It's just not not what I do. You can do that. Um, but it's just not what I do. Um, for me, like our Kali Apex, that's for adults. That, that's for humans. Okay. That's for humans. So that is for adults. That is for kids. You know, you just kind of slow it down with kids. You just kind of make sure that they're focusing on their basics. You know, like my, my youngest one, he still works on his angle one and his angle two. You know, we're slowly integrating footwork with them. You know, it's, it's, it's all the stuff that I teach. But, you know, I don't, I don't make a whole new program. I just teach it to him a little slower, right? And teach it to him as, you know, a little kid, not as an adult. Because it's the same information is what I'm trying to get to. Hey man, just copy, dude. You're not copying, man. You, you're if you're making videos of your own training, and you're not copying anything, dude. All this stuff has already been done. You know, it's like imagine if Elon Musk felt that way about designing a new car. I don't want to copy Henry Ford, dude, man. Like, just it's your it's your life, it's your choice, man. What do you want to do? You you do you, man. You're not you're not copying anybody. If other people have have feel that way, that's their problem. I don't, you know, there, there's a lot of new people that have come up on YouTube that are in the Kali world since I started Kali Center. I don't see them copying me. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. I don't care. <laughs> I'm training, man. I'm, I'm doing my thing. I don't, I don't know what they're doing. Do you, you do you. If you want to make videos, make videos. The world is yours, bro. You're kind of like Negan guy from Walking Dead. I guess I can be sometimes. <laughs> You're dedicated regarding 15 hour day. You got to do what you got to do. If you if you want the training, if you truly want the training, you're going to you're going to do whatever it takes to go get it. If you don't really want it, then you won't. You'll do something else that you really want to do. I want Kali. That's what I want. Batman got you into Kali. That's good, man. Any, anything that gets you in it. <laughs> you like my lesson. Keep on going. Yeah, I'm going to get to some more tips here in a second. 
All right, so uh, yeah, so we got coordination. Make sure you're focusing on the coordination of the strikes uh, that you're learning at, with your style, your system of Kali, whatever your martial arts is. Posture, make sure you got good posture. That's another really, really important one. Uh, the other thing is, again, these are universal tips, right? They're not technical tips, they're just universal tips that I think will improve your technique for the style that you're learning. Uh, make sure that you have some kind of recovery time. Okay, make sure that obviously you're hydrated, all that stuff, eat well. I'm not going to be your mother and tell you to drink water and eat good food. You, you figure that out. Um, but make sure that you do take some time to recover, uh, physically recover and or mentally recover. Like when we're training, like after our ITC, our ITC, our immersion training camp, it's five days of training. We, we train on average between 10 to 12 hours per day for five days straight. So within that time, we're burning, uh, we, we've done the all, everything that has calculated our bodies, the, the physical strain that we put on our bodies, the calories that we burn you know, each day. And on average, we burn about seven to 9,000 calories per day. Of course, that's gonna fluctuate, depend on size, weight, all that stuff. But on average, our staff burns about uh, about seven to nine thousand calories per day at ITC. So by day two, you are already calorie depleted. Okay, uh, we're pretty dehydrated because we're training the whole time. We're outside, exposed to the elements, and uh, you know we're all worked up after training for that long and getting dinner and everything, and then we kind of like go to bed late, and then I get up really early. Like when I'm at ITC, I, I wake up at like 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. I probably go to bed around midnight or 1. And then I'm up by like 3.30, 4 o'clock. I, I get my stretching in. I get my, my morning hike in. right? Because that's kind of like my, my own downtime. That's my rest time. It's not when I'm sleeping, but really when I'm hiking and stuff. right? That's my active recovery. So after ITC, after five days of that, I might still train, but I'm going to slow it down. And I'm going to make sure that I, I take some time to recover my body. Uh, not only does my body need recovering, because we're so mentally immersed in what we're doing, I need to recover my mind also. Because it's kind of hard sometimes to come back from something that you've been so immersed into. And then you got to like just kind of throw yourself back into like the mundane reality of things. So after something like that, I've, I've got to have recovery time. You know, physical and mental, re mental recovery time. Um, so when you're training a lot, make sure you get that recovery time. That's going to allow you to come back to your training fresh. Okay. It's going to allow your body to, to heal itself up and kind of get itself calibrated and everything. You're not actually improving the skill during that particular training session. It's when you come back, that's when you notice that you've gotten better, right? So can you come back and have a higher level of beginning of your performance that day? It's not necessarily that you've been training for an hour and you made improvements in that hour. Can you come back tomorrow and start at that improved level? That's when you know that you've made improvement. So that recovery time is gonna help you uh, kind of keep calibrating your skills up like that, okay? Uh, another one I wanna give you guys is just a, a, a formula here that I like to use for myself. My staff use it a lot and it's, uh, I've just kind of, we well, we've called it our the formula to greatness. Um, and it's just more of a mind thing. Number one, focus. Make sure you have immense focus on whatever it is that you're doing. The skill that you want to learn, the skill that you want to apply, the drill that you want to learn, your sparring that you want to do. Make sure you have 100% immense focus. Number two is 100% effort. Okay, now that doesn't mean always intensity, it means effort. Have physical effort in what you're doing. So as you're applying your strike, you want to have 100% focus on that strike and 100% effort that you are applying that strike absolutely correctly with all of the proper striking mechanic principles within that strike. Okay. And then number three is persistence. Be persistent in your training. Even if you, if you can't train for, you know, two hours a day, that's fine. If you can only get like five to 10 minutes in per day, the persistency is the most important thing, okay? Persistency will lead to consistency. And the consistency of training is far more important than the duration of time, okay? 
So make sure that you're working those things in. Where did I go to college? I never went to college. I couldn't afford it and I wasn't educated about it. So when I got out of high school, I was skateboarding, I was training, and uh, I, was, I was working jobs until I started teaching martial arts. So that was kind of my college was uh, Elite Defense Systems. That was Matt Numerick's school uh, out in the Chicagoland area. That's where I started my teaching and, and all that stuff. So I kind of count that as kind of like my college, but I didn't go to college because I didn't, I didn't, uh, I don't know. I wasn't privileged enough, I guess. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> it was never talked about in my house when I was growing up. So <clears throat> but I did a lot of self-educating. A lot of self-educating, a lot of reading, a lot of, uh, you know, finding mentors and things like that. Hands-on education stuff. Yeah, so, you know, sometimes some, I mean, I stutter and things, but, uh, you know, the whole speaking thing, making videos and teaching and stuff has improved my, uh, my ability to, to talk. And I'm not that great at it. What's up, buddy? All right. I'm finishing up this video. Hey, you want, you want to, you want to show the world your, your, your Carenza? Are you going to be shy? <laughs> you don't want to show them the moves you've been working on? What's happening, Kenneth? <laughs> Thank you, Billy. I appreciate that. I'm, t I'm talking to the YouTube world. Mm -hmm. You want to say hi? You want to see it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> A lot of them have seen you already. See, look, Sensei Emmett says he wants to see your Carenza. He wants to see your moves. Mm. Yeah, Kenneth, that, that'll happen too. It's just it's the translation of things from the left to the, to the right. That happens too. Because you're you're reteaching yourself. So when you when you've learned here, watch out. When when you've learned, uh, when you've learned your skill on your right hand, right? And then you go over to your left hand, okay. I'm not teaching you how to use your left hand. You're teaching yourself. So the skill that you developed on your right hand, you're you're using that and remembering that knowledge and you're using that to teach yourself how to use the left hand. Okay. And it was Socrates that said, uh, the highest skill of learning is through teaching. So you're teaching yourself that. So when you, you're, you're basically your right hand, which is like your right side is controlled by the left side of your brain, right? Is teaching your left hand and teaching the right side of your brain. So when you come back, your right hand in the left side of your brain, how that like supposedly works, I don't know. I'm not a brain scientist or anything, but however that works, it's going to understand that information better because it's taught it, right? So you've broken it down very differently. Like my skill has grown far more as a teacher than as a, tu as a student um, because I'm constantly teaching. I'm constantly going over you know, the basic mechanics. So I have to make sure that I'm performing them correctly. I know not all teachers work that way, but it's just the way I work. I got to make sure that I'm performing everything correctly. If I'm going to expect my students to perform it correctly. So it's this, that's the same exact method of learning right there. 
Uh, you're learning through teaching. You're just teaching yourself. So I'm teaching other people. I do teach myself also, but I'm teaching other people and that's helping my body like, okay, get in check, hide your performance and all that stuff. So that's another good tip there right there actually, guys. Kenneth kind of help, helped out bring that tip to improve your striking mechanics. So, so uh, yeah. All right, guys, I'm going to jet. I've been on here for about a, about an hour. Will you save the stream by any? Yeah, yeah, it'll be up here. It'll be up here. Um, so if you're just getting in now, no worries, no worries. I always let the replays and stuff happen. There might be ads and stuff in the middle if you can go, you know, deal with that. But, yeah, that's all cool. We're just kind of going over, you know, some just general tips on how to help get your strike mechanics better and all that stuff. Nothing specific towards Kali Center. I want you guys, because I know people are watching this channel. They're learning from other sources. You might, you know, go to a different school or study a different system. And one of the things with Kali Center is that, like, I'm not trying to take people from other styles and other teachers or other martial arts or anything like that. You know, uh, I'm, I'm not trying to do that. I just want to help you guys improve your Kali or improve your martial arts, whatever it is that you're doing. You know, if everybody wants to kind of stop learning from me, but they still want my tips, that's totally fine. <laughs> right? We're pretty self-sufficient. So. You going to go over there? All right. They're taxing 24% American YouTube's on AdSense. Whatever. I got to pay taxes regardless. It doesn't matter. It's out of my control, man. Why, why, why would I sit there and... What am I do? Complain about it? Or just focus on making more videos and try to make more money? <laughs> or, if I don't have the incentives to make more money because I got to owe it all the taxes, then the hell with making more money. Right? Fuck it. Whatever. Yeah, he just likes long hair. I think I think they like that because I have long hair. You know, but uh, I'm kind of of that mindset of uh, don't uh, don't 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 full, don't stress about so much stuff that's out of your control. Figure out what's in your control and, and work on that. Problem solved. That's what Kali's supposed to be teaching us. Um, so Echiketti helps on a couple things. Morgan, if you're still there, if you're going to catch us later on or what. Um, Echiketti does a couple of things. It's a circular thrust. It is a, an advanced manipulation. It counters Floretti. It counters Batiks. It has a lot of counters and all that stuff. Don't worry about it, dude. Everybody... My my kid my, my my kid is he he is he is so emotionally strong and so strong inside he doesn't care. We go to restaurants and they're like, oh she's so cute. He, he doesn't it don't bother him. He don't give a shit. Our our family's pretty pretty like that. We don't care. You know no no problems. But um, you know that's kind of what etiquette is kind of all about. You know, it helps you to track. It's protecting the center line. You know, you got the circular slashing of Floretti, and then you got the circular thrusting of Echiquetti. Um, there's a lot to it. There's, there's a lot to it. Yeah, just, uh, you know, there's, there's all kinds of stuff that you can look up about the Streza. Just start in the beginning. Start, start with, with, uh, with Sanchez de Carenza. And then you'll go right down the rabbit hole. Just just Google it, and then Carenza will come up, and then you'll you'll go through the rabbit hole. So Yeah, if you got tight wrists, I would definitely advise doing more wrist conditioning. <laughs> I got a bunch of videos on that up here, so go go check out those videos and do that every day. You know, it's it's uh, that's probably another tip is the, is just going back to that consistency of training, that persistence. 
What I find a lot of people do is, you know, I get people that tell me, oh, I've been training for 20 years. Yeah, different things every day for 20 years. So you've been quitting every day. You got to take time. You got to do this every day for a long, 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 long time, right? It's only going to get better. You can't do this for a day or one week and then expect that, you know, this is all, this is all done. You got to, once you get the skill, you got to maintain the skill and then you got to improve the skill, right? So um, that's, but that's something that I find that most practitioners that, that I've learned, they, they don't do. They don't, they don't really spend time getting a skill. I don't know if that's because like the day and age that we live in is kind of hurry, hurry. You know, we, we, we want everything right now. I order on Amazon. It's here in two days, you know, I mean, it's just, but that's as far as like martial skills, you know, it, it takes time. It's kind of slow progress. But when you're persistent with it daily, it's actually fast progress. And that's, that's, um, that's where I think people don't really understand that because they haven't put, you know, a couple weeks or a few months into, into the training. So they're not understanding that when you, when you are applying something to develop something and you're applying it across six months, you are making a tremendous amount of progress every week and every two weeks. Um, but people don't spend six months learning it. They don't spend six months developing it. Even when you go into like these martial arts schools, especially in the beginning, like you go to a Taekwondo school and it's like you're a white belt for a month and then you go do your test and then you got your yellow belt. Be a white belt for six months. Like, do you continue that information? Do you continue training that? You know, and not just like, oh, let me go through my front kick warm ups in the beginning of class so I can get to my orange belt stuff. Like, do you, are you, when you're at home, do you, do you go through all that white belt material and train it for the next handful of years, for the rest of your life? You know, that's, that's where you're seeing the improvements. Everybody wants to get advanced, but what people don't realize or what they forget or what they're just not taught is that the basics is the true advance. That's what you're going to use. Okay. Okay. Bro, do you think we will get a society collapse anytime soon? Well, this is getting weird now for the Kali Center channel. Uh, but here's my true answer to that question. I don't care. I don't care if the society collapses or not. To be honestly 100% truth with you, I don't care. The society can keep going the way it's going. It can fall apart. The world can burn. Humans can do whatever they want with themselves. I'm going to train my Kali until my end. So makes no difference to me <laughs> that's i mean that's my answer to it nikki strange world isn't it how things come together sometimes must be a coincidence right <laughs> Hell, man, modern, all, all ranking is disappointing to me. Nowadays, you can become a Tuhan of Kali in three years. <laughs> I mean, people are like, do you, do you contact, do you full contact spar? There's Tuhans of Pekiti Tersha. I've never seen them wear a freaking fencing mask. And they're, and they're Tuhans. Dude, it's, it's all a joke. The ranking stuff is all a joke. Just train, man. Train and get good for you. You, you self-actualize what you are and what your rank is. You don't need anybody else to give you the permission of that. Uh, not so much anymore, Aaron, but I used to all the time. I, I used to cross spar and do all that for a long, long time. I'm kind of more right now currently set in a path of where I, I, I know what I want to learn, how I want to grow. I don't, I don't train anymore to be a fighter. I don't train anymore for self-defense. I don't 
train anymore for like I train because we have a chess game and I just want to get really good at that chess game. And my training now is more for longevity than it is for fighting. Like I don't really care about fighting when it comes to training anymore. Now when I'm in my 40s, I might change. That you know, I might I might have a complete 180 in my in my head and I might want to just go fight everybody. I don't know. <clears throat> That's how I was in my 20s. I wanted I just wanted to fight. But I don't know, like in my 30s currently, not really interested in that. I'm interested in just kind of exploring like how, how deep does, does, you know, the tactics of the system and, and how far can we go with this? So I have to have certain people that are willing to get that esoteric with it. And the, the vast majority of people I come across are not really interested in becoming that esoteric with it. Um, you know, Tom is very interested in that. So... I don't know. Maybe, uh, you know, as I go into my 40s and stuff, I, that might change again. I don't know. But, yeah, I've done all that, dude. I had all kinds of questions. I questioned, you know, is this real? Would this really work against this person, against that person, against this style, against that style? And I did a lot of that stuff. And, uh, you know, maybe that's a young way of thinking in the martial arts. Um, and I think that's a very necessary path, you know, or pro part of the process in martial arts. Um, especially, especially in my Jeet Kune Do days. You now I, I had I trained in Kali before JKD, and then it came in JKD, and then that exposed me to different Kali styles, and then I went into back into Kali. Um, and in my JKD days, dude, I was I mean I was training boxing, I was training you know different grappling, jujitsu, I was training some savat, I was training different styles of FMA, I was you know seeking out Wing Chun people, and like hey, how does Hubud work against Chi Sao? And you know I, I was. Figuring, learning all this stuff. And I had some great teachers, Matt Numerick and Nick Faruqi and Adam Adensky and Sean Knapp and uh, a lot of these, these uh, Dustin Keith. You guys aren't going to know these names because these are local Chicago people. And uh, we, had, we had martial artists from all different styles of, you know, we had, I mean, golden glove boxers and we had, you know, silver glove savat practitioners. And we, we had people coming into that school from all different martial arts backgrounds. And, uh, I mean, every class started off with sparring. So that's, that's what we, that's how we warmed up. Uh, so yeah, dude, I wanted to get with everybody I possibly can. I think that's a very important time and part of the process in developing your martial skills is, is being able to kind of cross train and cross compare and things like that with different methods of training and teaching and, and performance and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, if you're at that, if you're at that stage right now in your training, have fun with it because it's a lot of fun. You know, I'm not in that stage right now with my training. I want to kind of, I know what I want. I know where I want to go and I want to go real deep on that. And, uh, there's really only one person that's willing to go that esoteric with me. And that's Tom. Are you, <laughs> I'd love to meet you if you are. Um, but again, you know, that, that can change, you know, that can change. In a year, two years, three years, five years, I might, like I said, have that 180 flip in my head and, all right, let's go back out there and go spar and fight everybody. I don't know. How do I strike harder without telegraphing my techniques? <clears throat> so I have a controversial answer to that that most people probably don't really agree with because they don't really understand it because they've never trained with me. But um, don't worry about telegraphing or not telegraphing your techniques. Get really good at applying your techniques at the right range, at the right timing, with the right amount of momentum. And then you never have to worry about if you are telegraphing your techniques or not. So apply your technique tactically and you don't have to worry about it. Most, people, most people's movements are telegraphed because they don't know how to measure the range and they don't know how to calculate and regulate the timing. It's that simple. They have, you know, a different logic system that they're bringing into their swinging of their weapon. Thank you. I appreciate that.
Three years. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Everybody should be playing chess in similar strategy games. Yeah, Nikki, the true skill of martial arts is not defense. It's it's offense. Martial. How do I balance my time between Espada Daga? Oh, Espada, double Espada, Espada Daga, Sibat, MTN, like all the 12 areas of Kali. Um, so, you know, that's a good question. Nowadays, I don't really have to balance my time with that because I've come to this realization that it's all variations of the same thing. Now, when I was, uh, so w when I'm training my single stick, I know how that, I know how that moves to the spear, right? Like, I understand that it's the same. It's the same system. Now, when I was learning this stuff, what I would do is I would take that, I would take one drill and I would apply that drill to all the areas of Kali that that drill can be applied to. So, you know, like say my basic like one, two, three, and four are basic angles like that. So I could take my training knife and one, two, three, right? Or let's make it even simpler. Say I learned the skill one and two. Okay, let's take the three and four out. I take the knife and I apply it to that. I go into different grips and I apply it to that. Right, and then I go into the double. And I learn, right, what's, what's those similar drills, right, those similar skills that are using that angle one and two. Okay. And then I go into the Espadia Daga. Now there's different variations of how to apply that, right? We can do that closed. Where we're passing the Daga through. One, two, and hit. Or one, two with the thrusts, right? That is one training session for me. And I do that through all the weapon categories and then I repeat and then I repeat and then I repeat. And that's all I focus on that day. Then I take that one and two, right? And I start to apply that to the footwork. Going through all of those categories, okay? Whatever the footwork is that I wanna work on, but that will be the drill for sometimes the month that all I'm going to work on is just one and two across those different categories. And then I just start applying it to the different footworks, right? And then when I work with another drill, maybe I work with like a plus or something like that. Okay, I do the same thing across all those categories. And then I start applying that to the footworks. So I'm doing one drill across all those areas of Kali. That's when it starts to uh, come together. And that's, that's when you start realizing that uh, it's, it's all the same. It's all the same system. And then you get to this, you get to this point um, to where you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what area you're training in because you, it makes sense. The only thing I'm having fun with is two karambit nizmen. Then just train that. Train what you enjoy. How long does it usually take for a practitioner to transition from stick to training knife? I don't know. It depends on the style and system that you're training. I don't know. I love watching your videos. They bring a new perspective to fighting with sticks machetes. I would like to adapt it to real world applications of self-defense with pressure testing involved. So you want to get into a stick or a machete fight? <laughs> Is that what you're saying?
Will you ever do any fencing strategy videos on the channel? Uh, well, it's all fencing strategies. It's just Kali. It's Eskrima. It's just a, you know, the way we look at it, it's, it's just a different method of fencing. But am I going to teach the Sreza on the channel? No, this is a Kali channel. And in our curriculum, in our, in our curriculum, I don't, I don't investigate other styles to be a master of that style. I look at, okay, where's the similarities in what we're doing here with, with the training, with what we're doing. So there's a lot more that we teach <laughs> for Kali Center. Come out to ITC, man. I'm teaching some stuff at ITC that I've never taught publicly before. I've only taught in private settings. Isn't the footwork too unstable at times? And isn't the NAD position too vulnerable? Oh, hand position too vulnerable. Not for me. I can't, I can't say it and definitely for, for everybody else. Uh, but no, not not for me. I've I've never felt unstable with my with my footwork. Never. Hand position. Nope. Gotta come train, man. It's it's hard it's hard to understand these things like on on like this. Because you're you're seeing something and, and you're making something up in your mind. But that doesn't mean that that's what's actually going on here, right? Like, you know. I mean, here, let me, let me, let me remove, let me move this, let me move this here a little bit. It's a good question. But if, if I'm here and I strike this, what's, what's unstable about that, right? What's, on, what's, what's unstable? You know, I'm locked into my, my hips. I've got balance. I've got earth underneath me. I'm still mobile. I can still choose what to do with my weaponry, I don't, I don't know where the unstableness is. Uh, I mean, if you're like, you know, I, I, I get people that will be like, uh, oh, if I see you with your feet together, I'll just charge in and take you down. Okay? You got to come through that. Okay? Daddy. What's up? You know that thing you took off of? You know that toast thing? That's the spigot? The, the, the thing that squirts the water out? No. That thing that holds that, the spigot, that goes onto the thing. I don't know where it is. It's over there, and oh. it screws onto those. Okay. Uh, and when you turn the water on, it directs it. Yeah? The hose? Yeah. Yeah, it's over there. I was wondering if I could put it back. Yeah. Put it in. Yeah, you can put it on. Yay! <clears throat> so a lot of people, like, I'll get that, right? Like, people will, will be saying, like, you know, well, when your feet are together, I did a whole video on this, but uh, when your feet are together, I'm going to come in, rush in, and take you down. But take the fencing mask off. Let's, let's go into reality then. You got to take the fencing mask off. You got to take the gloves off. And you got to get hit with the weapon. All right? Um, but if you're off balance in your footwork, if you feel like you're unstable, then either A, you're not training it right, or B, you haven't trained it enough. So your question is, isn't the footwork too unstable at times? No. And isn't the hand position too vulnerable? No. Because there's range and there's timing involved. And there's tactics involved. And when somebody is just better than you, they're just better than you. It means you got to train more. I'm more interested in techniques that are relevant to my country's laws. I'm from UK, so I want to train stick against knife or machete. Yeah, then you should train that. I 
obviously for self-defense, I'd want to stay within the law, right? But that doesn't de deter me from really understanding Kali. Like I said, you're training for self-defense. So you have a different purpose for training. You have different wants for your training. I'm not training for self-defense. I'm training to get deeper into Kali, right? So it's just different. So just train for what you want. Nothing wrong with that. What would be my recommendation for reliable EDC if we didn't if we didn't have to worry about laws or anything like that? That's a great question right there. This and a fixed blade, my friend. I would literally walk around with my bolo right there. And then I'd have my fixed blade right here. And I'd be carrying my bolo with me. That's what I would be doing. Or I'd have my, my fixed blade here in my pistol here <laughs> that's if 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 i can do it however that's what that's how i would do that would be my everyday carry you know my everyday carry though i don't know i don't i don't know if i can really say that that's ideal right but my everyday carry used to be two knives now it's just one because i don't i don't care Beat me up, take my wallet, shoot me in the head. Then I don't have to. I, I don't have to. You know, give myself away anymore to the society falling apart, like the other person said, right? <laughs> I, I, I'm really not concerned with self-defense personally. Now that doesn't mean I won't fight if something happens, but I'm I'm not really worried about it. I don't I don't really think about it anymore. You'll pay attention to your environment. As you're kind of like moving around and all that stuff. Like I don't, I don't live in Chicago land anymore. So I'm not, I'm not really worried about flash mobs and you know, all that crazy stuff anymore. I, I live out in the middle of a forest right now. So I'm, I feel pretty safe. If somebody wants to try to break into my house while I'm home and my family are home, they're going to get shot. They're not going to get stabbed. They're going to get shot. Um, So, I mean, it, it's just, it's different. Like I said, my, my, my mentality on self-defense, it's just different. It's just, it's, it's not really a martial artist, you know, typical um, mentality on self-defense. Now, I've been training for a long time, so I'm not really worried about that. And that might be why, because I've been training for a long time, and, and I'm, I just kind of gotten to that point where um, I feel like I can pretty much handle myself in most situations all situations no if i'm driving down the highway and some dude's hiding in a tree got you know sniper problems and picks my vehicle and puts a bullet through my head i mean what are you gonna do about it <laughs> right i don't know if i'm in a position where i can fight back i'll fight back i got no problem like Sticking this thing in someone's neck if I had to. I don't want to. I don't have a problem with that. But, you know, I just don't, I don't know. I don't really think about it. I used to do a lot of scenario play in my head. Like, it was back in, when I was in my 20s. All I wanted to do was fight. So, I've talked about this before. And I'm going to make this kind of brief because I'm going to jump out of here very soon. But, um, you know, when I reflect back on why I was training back in my 20s, my early 20s and into my mid 20s and stuff. I thought it was all because I wanted to fight. I wanted to be able to protect myself. I didn't really care about protecting myself. I just wanted I just wanted to know how to fight and cheat, and, you know, cheat the best fight that I can. Um, but really, as I reflect back on that, what I started realizing is that I lacked courage. I just didn't have courage. In my early 20s, I didn't have it. And that's why when, when I was in you know, our JKD school, every single class I started, I'd look for the biggest dude that intimidated me and I'm like, I'm going with you. And every single time I was hoping that that person would just punch me in the head or knee me or whatever, it would, it would be so 
much that it would just it would just put me down one shot that was my mindset and i realized that now as i reflect back on that um because i lack courage i was i was afraid i was scared you know i i was i was kind of afraid of myself i, I lacked courage in myself i didn't really trust myself i didn't really believe in myself and that's why I was acting that type of, you know, that's why I was, I was like that. I was looking for that, that type of training. And that, that's not everybody, right? Everybody's got their own journey. So there's a bug crawling all over my phone. So it's just different for everybody. So this is why it's so important to do your own, you know, self analysis and self reflections and, and things like that. What's your purpose for training? What do you want from your training and how that evolves over time? But now I don't know. I don't, I don't really, I'm not worried about it. It's just life, right? Yeah, fencing's a good sport. I think, you know, if you're interested in uh, that type of maneuvering and performance, you should definitely give it a shot. It'll teach you a lot. You know, like we have a lot of saber saber techniques and saber positions and stuff. Okay, not, not, not like knife and saber grip, but like saber. We have a lot of that type of position here at Kali Center. So, you know, I don't know if I can really call what we teach Kali anymore because we do integrate other things into it now. Because I'm always looking for answers, right? I'm always looking, for, you know, we, we're we training, we're advancing at what we're doing, and then we, we hit a problem. And, you know, this was happening even back in my PTK days. And I would ask my PTK teacher, and maybe he had the answer, but he just wasn't giving it to me for whatever reason. Doesn't matter what the reason is. So I had to start looking at other things, right? I had to start putting my attention and investigating other things to get these problems solved. To build that ingenuity, you know, and um, it just led me in a different direction. It's what I want from my training. Yeah, no problem, Daniel. Those are good questions, man. People question the footwork all the time. I find the people that question the footwork all the time or, you know, the people that question that, they just, they're not training it. And if they're trying it out, they're not, you know, you, you come here. Train with me in person, get to ITC, get to St. Augustine, Florida, get to wherever I'm at. Stop waiting for me to come to you and come get the training. And then you get a flow with me because we're going to go together. We're going to train together. And trust me, it won't matter if we're going full contact with the helmets on or if we're having a friendly flow. It won't matter. It's the same thing to us. Okay. We, we can train with each other without wanting to bash each other's heads in and hit each other's fencing masks and gloves. And we could train with each other and it's going to be very effective and you're going to grow a lot of skill. The reason why people don't think that that training exists is because they don't train with us. They're busy doing the norm that they're used to seeing on YouTube videos and martial arts. So they don't know these training methods. They don't understand them. They've never done them. They've never put time into them. They've never trained with me personally, so they don't know. Everything they do is they speculate, 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 and speculate, and they never actually come and train. But the option is always there to come and train. So it's up to you. You can keep wondering about footwork, and you can keep wondering about hand positions your entire life, or you can come train and get the answer. It's up to you what you want. I do not train any kind of tactical firearms, but I did grow up hunting and operating firearms. I've been using five pound kettlebell to practice collie moves. I do it. Yep, I've done that. Can you teach grappling grapples and submissions with a stick? Yes, I can. Obviously, I can't do it right now because there's nobody here to do them. 
That's actually a pretty interesting answer, and I appreciate it. Thankfully, we can open carry big fixed blades now in my state, but I notice your EDC is Spyderco. Is that your favorite brand? Uh, I don't really care about the brand. So uh, the reason why I like Spyderco is just it happens to be they design a knife that is very comfortable in my hand. Um, I like a manual opening. I like the size of the hole. I don't care that it says Spyderco on it or anything like that. I do like this H1 steel. I use the specific salt because when I'm traveling and training, I might be at the beach and we're training in the water. And I tested this to make sure that it is to what they say that it is salt water resistant. And it is. I had an Endura and I had a Spyderco. The Endura got rusted out. Uh, but the spider or the Pacific salt was fine um, So that's why I like these I don't like spring assisted. I don't like the wave feature. I like just a simple manual opener um, It's all just as fast you know and um, People are like, you know the, the wave feature you got to make sure you catch your pocket, right? You know if you got a button you gotta make sure you hit the button, right this it's just I'm elate, I'm relate, I'm eliminating mechanical errors, right? Um, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what my pants like. I don't know how this feels to my pants. I know how it feels on my body, but if I'm trying to catch a a tiny little piece of metal or you know a little zip tie that I rigged up on my knife onto a fabric, right? Like that's a my thumb, I can feel all this stuff with my thumb, right? So that's why I just like a nice, clean manual opener, a thin profiled grip that I can hold in my hand. I don't have to really, I don't like big, thick, like, like cold steel knives to me. They're just too bulky for me. I don't like them. Uh, I feel like I have to put more uh, attention into holding the knife than using the knife, you know, if that makes sense to you. Um, you know, I like the, I like the, the tip up when it's in my pocket, they have a smooth opening. I just think that they make really good products. I'm not endorsed by them. Uh, I would never be endorsed by Spyderco. Um, if they ever called me up and said, hey man, you wanna make some videos and we'll sponsor your videos and we'll pay you this amount of money, I'd be like, nope, not interested in that. Um, you know, it, it's just, uh, it just happens to be a, a knife that I like. I've tried all kinds, I've tried hundreds of knives. What is your favorite weapon style to practice? Spear. Spear is my favorite. Do you intend to show some shield work at some point? Uh, I'm going to at some point in our... I, I am going to show some shield stuff at some point in our Kali Apex. I don't know if I'll show it on YouTube. I might. I don't know. But I will be doing that in our Kali Apex at some point. I'm from Mexico, but I will try. Where, where you're from doesn't matter. Where, that, that doesn't matter. <laughs> train, man. It doesn't matter where, where you're from, train. Yeah, just work it out, right? Get into Kali Apex. If you're from Mexico, if you're from a different country, here's another thing that you can do. If you want to train and get the guidance from us, here's what you can do. Get the Kali Apex, start training that. Jump into our Patreon as a gold member, and then you can set up one-on-one -on -one private video coaching calls, and we can work with you. And then if you have a training partner, we will work with you and your training partner. We can do that virtually, and uh, you'll start getting it. And then whenever you can come and train with us, then come train with us. What are your thoughts on martial arts tier lists? I don't know what that means. Also, if you... We're going to make one. Where would you put Kali in? Oh, you mean like what martial art is better than the other? I don't think that way. Don't care about that. That ain't the question for me. Bring Bob out and strangle him. <laughs> Bob will be coming back out. We, we should be about done with the freezing temperatures at night. So Bob, dirty Bob will be coming back out and we'll be getting some training in with him. I got some other stuff that I'm going to be building once my garden is kind of more uh, like established. 
uh, I'm going to be integrating the different training implements that I'm going to be building in the garden. And then um, I'll be doing I'll be doing a lot of videos on that stuff. And I'll also be showing you guys like how I built it. It's going to be simple stuff to kind of different stuff. And uh, you, you guys are going to love it. So I got I got a lot of plans to get you guys training and all that stuff a lot more. Okay, well, in boxing, look at their footwork, man. You ever, their their feet come together from side from time to time, especially when they gotta when they're switching sides. Look at Mike Tyson, dude. Look at how he boxed. Look at Sugar Ray. Look at how those guys boxed. I mean, do you stand still when you're boxing? You could you could apply some of that footwork into your collie as well. Work work just just work that in. I'm finally not selling the fox grommet. Yeah, like some, it's just, you know, the, the knife that you choose to, to carry, it's just a personal preference. Like uh, one of my teachers, he loved, he loved cold steel knives. It, to him, it felt great in his hands, you know? So it's just, uh, it, it was a thing that he can rely on. So remember that we weaponry is, uh, it's a, uh, it's just a personal preference thing. You know, weaponry in the past was designed for the specific person, for the specific individual. So you want to treat your weaponry like that. But, you know, over time, you'll, you'll, find, you'll find what works for you. Is there a specific breathing for Kali strikes? I have trained in other... Yes, there actually is. I'm actually going to be making a uh, video for our sponsors on breathing. So uh, that video is actually on my video list. So that one will be getting made. But yes, there actually is. Uh, and the breathing will change depending on your energy level. So as you're getting tired, we got a breathing technique for that. As you are more energy, we got a breathing technique for that. And then to conserve... Uh, reserve a lot of energy we've got breathing for that so yes there's actually breathing techniques that we teach here at college center it's not i i wasn't taught it from other teachers and stuff this is stuff that we've learned just from from training all the time roland am i ever going to host a training camp it is called Immersion Training Camp, ITC, June 23rd through the 27th, 2021. It's going to be at Broken Arrow Horse Campground in Custer, South Dakota. We train in the middle of the Black Hills National Forest. Uh, I hold this every single year. I've been holding it. This is the fifth year that I've been doing it. Uh, come on out and train, man. Registration is open right now, so check it out. Go over to colliecenter.com. We'd love to have you there and uh, train with you for those five days. All right, guys, I'm going to jump out of here. I've been on here for about 100 minutes. I'm going to jump out of here and uh, hang out and do all that stuff. I got stuff I got to do today and do some training and do all that other stuff that I want to get done today. It's been awesome hanging out with you guys. If you need to, go back, check out some of those uh, striking tips, kind of general striking tips that's going to help you just in your performance of Kali. I enjoy all the questions. I enjoy all the questions. They're, they're great questions and everything. And uh, I will catch you guys back here next time. I'm trying to do these lives a little bit more. I don't really have a schedule for them. It's just kind of when I can jump on here and do them. Um, but I'm hoping to do them a lot more. You want to do some Carenza? Mm -hmm. No? All right. Daddy. Hang on, buddy. I'm almost done. All right, so uh, I will catch you guys next time right here. All right, the replay will be up and all that stuff. Thanks for uh, sharing your time with me. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching the videos. Thanks for being a sponsor of the channel or a subscriber of the channel. And uh, if you want to go further into our training, if you can't come train with us in person at ITC or St. Augustine or one of our chapters, head over to KaliCenter.com and jump into the Kali Apex. Okay, grab it. Get it. It's going to answer so many of your questions. Okay. I'll see you guys next time. Later.